Memorial Day weekend is coming up, and that means barbecue. Bob Sykes Barbecue has been the pride of the South for more than 50 years. See how they slow cook their delicious ribs in the daytime kitchen. Today we are at Bob Sykes Barbecue in Bessemer, and I'm joined by the owner, Van Sykes. And, you know, Memorial Day is just right around the corner. It's barbecue time, and today you're showing me how to make your famous ribs. Yes, but ribs have gotten really popular in the last few years. Uh, a lot of the uh, more famous restaurants have always served ribs, mm -hmm. and we've always served ribs, too. So rib is a hot thing right mm -hmm. now, especially coming up on the barbecue season. Oh, yeah. Now, what I was going to show you, Brooke, there's three kinds, basically, of ribs. First, you've got the back rib. Uh-huh. Then you've got the full spare rib. All right, and then you've got your St. Louis trim rib, which is nothing but a spare rib with the skirt meat removed right here. This is called the brisket. It's cut off and this little, well, I call it a knuckle bone. Mm -hmm. Now you see it's basically a square. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason a lot of restaurants do that is they can count exactly what that portion is going to be. So they square it up. This also works real good for your grill at home because you can get more up on the grill and end up with more bones at the end for people to eat. So you can just trim it down. There's a line right across the bottom right there. You'll see you just cut along that line and square that baby up. And it works perfect for your home grill. I've always wondered what the difference was between all the, the cuts of, of ribs because you you're, you look at a menu and you're like, well, really, what's the difference between well, that, that, and that? I tell you, there's an old country saying that goes, we're eating high on the hog tonight. Uh -huh. Well, basically, that's what this is. This is a back rib and it is up high on the hog, it is considered a better piece of meat. A lot of the high-end restaurants use that particular rib because the cost per pound is so high. So high on the hog is high end. High on the hog is high end for <laughs> sure. Now down here at Bob Sykes, we just go with the old spare rib. Oh, well, because, I like you know the what? spare rib because I don't spare a rib. <laughs> I, I like that. You can, you can borrow that. We set. may have a new tagline here. <laughs> Basically, we like the spare rib because we like to cook all these pieces mm -hmm. that I've detached over here because in the end it adds to the flavor. Oh, yeah. We're just an old barbecue joint and this is the way barbecue's been done. Well, we've been here 52 years and this is the way ribs have always been cooked before we did all this fancy trimming. So you know they're doing something right. Well, how do we uh, season these and how, how do you put the barbecue on? All right, I'm going to give you your ingredient list. All right. Fire, salt, and meat. Fire, salt, and meat. I can do that. All right, now the missing ingredients is patience. It takes patience to cook a rib. Basically, a lot of your work's done getting your fire ready. Mm -hmm. You got to burn your fire and get it ready. I'd say cure, we call it curing the fire. We're going to cure the fire for a good half hour to 45 minutes. All right. Before we've done that, we've taken our rib and we use some what we call kosher salt instead of iodized salt. Now the reason is this salt tends to sort of melt into the product rather than just sit on it like an iodized product. So we, we use the kosher salt and we put it on what might look like a little heavy to some folks, but see what we're going to do is we're going to work this into the meat and you just continue to just rub this in and and I do it some people do it on one side I like to do it on both uh, all right now when we work this salt in real good mm -hmm. we're gonna put this back in the refrigerator we're gonna let it stay about eight or nine hours oh, before wow. we cook it purpose of this is this salt on here will dissolve the membrane and that's what makes a rib tough Whenever you get one of those that you got to wrestle with, well, they just didn't do a good job of getting the membrane off. They didn't off. have enough patience. Didn't have enough patience, the missing ingredient, <laughs> exactly. Now, you can also aid in that process by using some liquid tenderizer that I've made up, which is basically papaya, nectar, um, vinegar, and salt, and the rest water. And as it's cooking on this hot fire, like you see these back here, yeah, that's we good. just add the tenderizer to it as it's cooking and as we're flipping it. And the vinegar and the citric acid in this mm. tenderizer are going to continue to soak through that meat and soften it up. 
And when do you put the Bob Sykes barbecue sauce on? We put that on after we cook after it. After you cook it. Right. Now, that's just good old southern barbecue. Okay. Now, you can put your sauce on there the last four or five minutes. But if you put it on there, have you ever put it on there and when it comes off, you put barbecue sauce on the product and it comes off and it's black looking? Mm -hmm. That's because the sugar in it has burnt or crystallized. And you don't want to do so that. So we don't want to do that. If we're going to add sauce, which a lot of them have some kind of sugar in there, mm -hmm. then you need to wait to just the last few minutes. But the best thing to do is when you get it off the grill and it's good and hot, then put your Bob Sykes sauce on All there. All right. Perfect. All right. Well, Van Sykes, thank you so much. Now, coming up after the break, he's going to show you how to make his famous cold slaw. We're also going to show you the finished product, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Daytime Alabama. Again, we are at Bob Sykes Barbecue, a barbecue, as we like to say in the South, That's and I'm right. joined by Van Sykes, the owner, Hello. chef extraordinaire. Okay, so our ribs, we're going to show you those in just a second, the finished product, but right. let's talk about your famous slaw here and how you make it. Well, Almost every good barbecue place will have a slaw. Uh, there are different kinds. A lot of them are very vinegary. Uh, a lot of them are kind of uh, sugary. Well, this one's kind of in between. Perfect. Well, then I'm going to love this. All right. Now, the first thing you got to do to have good coleslaw is you got to grade your cabbage fresh. We just basically, you, you just use a hand grater. One of these you find at any of the, Anywhere. Any yeah. of the stores. And you grade this, run it through there. Be careful not to grade your knuckles. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, then you end up with this right here. This is the grated slaw, and this is the right amount of carrot. Mm -hmm. You got seven cups of cabbage for one cup of carrot. Now, if you'd like, you can go ahead and put your mayonnaise Ooh, in there. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. All right, and here's, put, there's, there's your sugar. The only thing left to that then you're going to put about a cup of tarragon vinegar. Ooh, wonderful. Now, tarragon is a wonderful vinegar. Uh, I like the tarragon just as a, as a, uh, as a uh, flavoring just by itself. All right, so after we put the vinegar in and the sugar, then uh, you also, let me add this one more thing. You also want to make sure you get some green leaf Here's the finished product. If you'll get down there, you'll see there's some green leaf mm -hmm. mixed in there. That gives you some wonderful flavor. Speaking of good presentation and good flavor, let's show the finished product of those ribs. Right. This, oh, my this goodness. Is, Look at that. After you've labored over the grill, this is your reward right here. Uh, now, how long do you recommend we put our ribs onto our grills at home? Because we obviously don't have the, the fancy schmancy grill like you have exactly. here at Bob Sykes Barbecue. So how long do we put those on? Well, we've got an old-fashioned brick pit. Most people at home are going to have a metal grill. Metal is really hot. I would go to the lowest setting on the grill, uh, if not, in fact, just burn one side of the grill. And you, after you've done your prep work and you put your salt on there, when you come out to bring it onto the grill, you'll, you'll notice that it's kind of wet. Now, my daddy used to call that drippy. When it's drippy, it's ready to go. Well, when you put that drippy rib up there and you start hearing the sizzling, <laughs> wait about 15 minutes and turn, and then you're going to turn about every 20 minutes and about... I'd say about two hours on your home grill, you should be ready to go. Awesome. And then you have your little barbecue sauce drizzled over. Yes, you know, and then so you just good. come and back got here. Some chicken, too, I see. And, and on the sauce, depending on your taste, you can drizzle, but it is okay to dunk. I too. was about to say, you I can like dunk. to dunk the barbecue <laughs> sauce out of mine. And then, of course, that tastes fabulous. Oh, yeah. Chicken and then, as well. And then the barbecue sauce goes great with barbecue chicken. Mm, uh, mm, we mm. also feature that at the store. Oh, as well goodness. as the ribs. I so, uh, love it. Oh. Those are some really good picnic items oh, uh, yeah. for the summer. Perfect for Memorial Day. Perfect. All right. Well, Van Sykes of Bob Sykes Barbecue, thank you so, thank so you, much Brooke. for having thank me here you in your so kitchen. Much. And he's going to share all these wonderful tips with you. Let's go to our website, daytimealabama.com.